The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Munker, his guests, and callers on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2020. All rights are reserved. Broadcasting live from the ILTV studios located here at University Drive. Welcome to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monker. I'm a Justice of the Peace here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I'm also a member of the local Catholic Christian community. Today, however, is Tuesday, the 26th day of March in the year of our Lord 2024. So I welcome each and every one of you who is joining me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is powerful and God save the King. Well, folks, very early this morning, a plane landed on Meguana with over 800, perhaps 860 kilos of pure cocaine. And of course, the United States Coast Guard somehow happens to be either in the area on air or on the land at Meguana and they intercepted that plane as it landed and one smuggler was successful in evading arrest and he got away in the bushes of Meguana but the other scallywag he was arrested so nice pure cocaine is here can you imagine it 860 kilos and for those in the taxi cab business, they all know that my taxi cab number is 860. Isn't that phenomenal? My taxi cab number is 860 and there's 860 kilos that has landed worth perhaps $7.5 million. So this is what is going on in the country. And I trying to figure out how come only the American was aware of all of this coke being landed here. We'll talk about it. And this art, the art of drug trafficking through our many, many islands. Today I'm gonna to look at education. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna look at education. So I want everybody to relax. It's a wonderful day in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, okay? There's hardly any news to report, but I'm certain news is being gathered at this very moment. This is for the March. God save the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. God save our King. Welcome back. To Freedom March, my name is Rodney Monker, and of course, I'm going to be reporting now from the Register General's office. Um, perhaps for about a month, maybe six weeks, the elevator at the Register General's department has not been working, creating a lot of complications for senior citizens those who are now compelled to walk the stairs. And that is as a result of Mrs. Registrar General being unsuccessful in convincing the current Attorney General, Senator, the Honorable Ryan Pinder, to fix the elevator. So staff are very frustrated Members of the public are very frustrated and it is my hope and prayer that the government would immediately fix the elevators. That, that is all that the people are requesting. That is all that the staff wants. That is all that the public is demanding. So it is my hope and prayer that Senator Ryan Pinder 
will no longer ignore this real issue and that he would have the elevator fixed and that would be powerful. Well, my spiritual advisor, Bradley Rule, is here and I'm certain that he's ready to do God's work and to gossip the gospel. So, Brother Rule, welcome to Freedom Mass. Thanks so much. Uh, good to be here, Santa. And um, behold the Bohemian people. All right. So today, Santa, and good afternoon to all those who are listening to us um, on Freedom March today. Welcome. Um, we're going to continue our thoughts um, on the teachings of Jesus Christ concerning his, um, what is called, time that he will spend in the grave. And um, um, we're going to focus today primarily on the book of John, chapter 2. And we're going to look at verses 18 to 22. And we're going to see where Jesus again um, predicts um, not only his death, but um, the amount of time he's going to spend um, in the tomb. All right. So here we go. John chapter 2, 18 to 22. Here's what the book says. I'm um, reading from the NIV. It says, then, it says, the Jews then responded to him. What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And they replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you're going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. And then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Uh, John chapter 2, 18 to 22. There we have it again. The prediction, not only of his death, but the amount of time that he would spend in the grave. He said, destroy this temple and I will raise it. Three days. And I be the word of God is is always and forever blessed. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Producer, and back to you, of course, Sandra. Well, I thank you, my spiritual advisor. Mm -hmm. And as we begin the process of celebrating this most holy, holy event, I note that you have produced quite a number of edible and drinkable stuff on this table. Yes, and uh, as uh, everyone is aware, several food store every year um, at this time decides to sponsor this show. And um, um, that sponsor comes through, of course, advertising their Easter products. They have these products that they um, concentrate on um, during the Easter time. And um, um, of course, uh, these are some interesting and very tasty Jamaican treats. Of course, you got the the Easter bun, uh, you got the bami, you got the the tasty cheese in the can, you got this um, bulla. So you, you know what bulla is? Bulla? So, so grab it and smell it and tell me uh, what this Would you kindly you. pass it to so I? The, I can't reach that. Which it's, one? It's, it's closer to you. This bulla is right. Is it the bottle? No, no, the bulla. The it's bulla. this year. Yeah. This year that is bulla. Yeah. Bulla, bulla, yeah. Well, my smell it. grandmother what does it remind you of a uh, bulla bike. What does it smell like? You, wow. remember, you remember the gingerbread man? This is this is delicious. Yeah, um, that's what it smells like. Did Santa will send anything for I? For um, I, I man? Well, we, we, I see uh, the manager, the owner of Santa Food, so he actually cut this um, slice of um, Jamaican cheese. I love Jamaican cheese. Um, there. Okay, this and is Jamaican course, cheese. Did he send any holy drinks for me? Um, when you say, what do you mean by holy drinks? It means that the drink is set apart for a reason. Because that's what the word holy means. It means set apart. Did he now, set apart any I drinks for me? I see we have some royalty, non-alcoholic celebration drink. Okay. Red grape. This is red grape. So I, I assume this is some kind of red, um, maybe cider. I, I think it is. Lord, I thank you for the red grape. 
And what else did he send for I? Yeah, no, Santa. Okay, let's do this first. These products you can find at the Santa Food Store. Okay. You got the, the Easter bun. And you, of course, you have the Show me the bun. Easter bun. This is the Easter bun. Lift here. it up so the public would see the Easter yeah, bun. Yeah, this, this, this is the Easter bun here. Okay. All right, that's the Easter bun. And then, of course, you got the Easter spice bun. And I, I believe it's a spice bun because it has um, like maybe yeah, some cherries. The spice bun? Right there. Just grab it on top of the bullet. Uh, you're not the No, 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 not that. This one. Right. Uh, why is it called Easter Spice? Look at it. Look at it. I think it's called Spice Bun because of those things on top of it. Do you okay. see some? Do you see like some cuttings on it? Yes. Maybe cherries. And, and um, this was milk. made in Jamaica. Yeah. All of this is all of these are Jamaican really? products. Really? Yeah. J J the Jamaicans are very smart. As a matter of fact, the Jamaicans could actually feed themselves. Uh, when really? I, when I visited Jamaica, I was very impressed when I okay. went in the food store. All right. About, 85% of the products in the food store actually were made in Jamaica. Uh-huh. Yeah. So okay. they're very industrious and innovative people, to okay. say the least. And what is in that plastic? All right. This yeah. here is what is called the water crackers. This, this, is, this is popular among Jamaicans. Um, I think the best way, I don't know how the Jamaicans eat this, but for me, I would soak this in some tea. You would soak that in yeah, some you know, tea? Yeah, when we was young, how we used to put the bread in the tea yeah. and, and soak the bread in tea and eat it, yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm thinking, for me, okay. that I would soak this in some tea and, and decide to eat this. Now, this one is the cinnamon fat-free. I have another bag down there, which is well, the... Why didn't the you bring plate. it up, my spiritual advisor? Yeah, on the break, we'll get it. Goodness of mercy. there's another... Um, Aren't you, uh, isn't um, Sandville paying for this advertisement? Yes, month? yes, they are going to Did pay. you bring the check? Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to um, management to find out what it, what it costs, actually. Because I'd like to I pull in that I'm, check, I'm, okay? I'm qualified enough to... Um, I pull in the check? Do this and find out what the price this is. is Nobody else can do this. I don't think you can do this and get away with this. Okay. You could be fired for this, actually. All right. But um, I decided to go on a limb because of my association with Sandville Food Store and have this done and then of course they can tell me what the cost is okay and of course i would bring that check back um to management but among these here are the excelsior water crackers yes uh, the cinnamon water crackers and um now here's what i'm understanding from the owner of food store all of these items i'm going to ask trivia questions and you can win these items now right? j just hold on a second Win the item, save that those that have been donated to me. No, no, it's nothing here for you, Santa. There's nothing here for no, me? But no, That isn't what management told me. Well, I don't know what they tell Well, maybe that drink is. No, management told Santa, me. Santa, you got to My spiritual like advisor. That, you, know? you got to learn what, sometimes what? to give. You're always trying to take. My spiritual advisor, All right. management on, man. contacted like me. They told me they were sending me some All special... Right. Yeah, just that drink, drink is yours. Just a they drink. They told me they're sending me some cheese. Okay, so you can have that too. They also now, told me that they're sending me some Jamaican. Santa, let's do this. Let's, let, 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 me, let me say this. Let's, let's do this. Lord, have mercy. Santa, you can always side. get that from the food store, but let's give this to the public. You want to give my stuff to the public? Santa, okay. You can, Santa, come on. You know your relationship with Santa from the food store. It's like zero, man. Come on. Why are you compromising Don't me on forget now. TV? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 32 says, and be kind one to the other, man. Come on. So, so I'm just giving away my stuff. What we want to do is we're going to ask some trivia questions. They're going to be biblical questions centering around the theme for this week. And once you answer correctly, you can have, you can come into the studio and get one of these um, Jamaican products. And don't forget, these products can be um, found at the Sandwell Food Store, which is located on 6th Avenue and, and wait, six, East Avenue and 6th Terrace. Forgive me. Sandwell Food Store that's located on East Avenue and 6th Terrace. The telephone number is 325-8106. They have a very large supply of these items in stock. How much terrace? 6th Terrace. Really? And East Avenue okay. is where you can find several food stores. It sits right at the corner of East Avenue and 6th Terrace. The okay. telephone number is 325-8106. And the proprietor is Mr. Horace Miller. All right, so you can go there and ask for Mr. Horace Miller. And um, he has um, some able staff um, on board to assist you with these um, very tasty Jamaican products. Now, this is the time of the year when these buns, in particular, um, are sold um, at the Santa Fe. These are Jamaican buns. Jamaican buns. I understand they taste really good. They're very moist and tasty. I've never tried Jamaican buns yet. Yeah. 
So to get these Easter, yeah, uh, to get these Easter bunny trees, uh, you can go down to the Sandville Food Store, 325 8106 is the number. And of course, you can ask for Mr. Horace Miller, who is the proprietor. All right. So at some point during the day or tomorrow, we're going to ask some trivia questions. And um, um, if you answer them correctly, um, you can come here to the um, studio. Where collect. is the prizes for? Yeah, the cookout. St. James. Well, I would Anglican. Know. Church yeah. Adelaide. I, I wouldn't know, Sam. You wouldn't know? No. Okay. Well, we have to find them because they're here somewhere. Absolutely. So, in the meantime, let's get back to some news and then we will find it. But let's do an, another advertisement. How does it sound? Yes. Okay. So, let's see what we have here. Western Air now flies to North Elutra and Nassau on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings, as well as Sunday evenings, visit www.westernairbahamas.com to book today. Western Air is very powerful. So that's powerful indeed. Well, folks, very early this morning, a very interesting thing occurred in the southern part of the Bahamas, we have an island called Meguana. A airplane flew to Meguana. And on board the airplane were two men that have been described as white men. They landed at Meguana around 1 a.m., perhaps 1.30 a.m. this morning. And they had a plane load of cocaine. In fact, According to observers, they had approximately 860 kilos of cocaine. 860 kilos of cocaine. They got a shock of their life when the Bahamas Drug Enforcement Unit, the United States Drug Enforcement Agency, and the U.S. Coast Guard swarm upon them. Do you know three of the greatest law enforcement pursue two white men in the bush? And you know one of the white men got away? I've never seen the level of incompetency in all my blessed life. So they captured a man whom international sources have revealed to me is a Brazilian. But the real white man, he got away, so I'm suspicious. Who is this real white man that has been able to escape in the bushes of Meguana? I'm very, very suspicious, and I call on those involved to tell me what the hell is going on. How is it? The two whole white man, and with all that law enforcement agency, all that training, all them with them little plane they fly up in the air to see her. Drones. Drones. Um, only the Brazilian they have captured. So there is a Brazilian in custody. We should call this Brazilian Pablo. So Pablo not his real name, is now in custody, but John, not his real name, a real white man, he has escaped, and I demand that the bushes of Meguana be searched until they find him. 860 kilos, worth seven and a half million dollars. And I'm very offended because my taxi number is 860, and everybody's telling me that 860 is like a very lucky number. People tell me that every time they buy my number and they box it, it's fall. So um, with 860 kilos, that's a lot of boxing y'all would have to do. So I'm going to suggest, I've never done it before, but I call on everybody on the island of New Providence, go now to the nearest number house, 
by 860 boxes, by 860, 860 um, in terms of kilos, that large figure, and then 860 in terms of my taxi plate. Just box it and slam, dunk it. And if you win, send me a donation, okay? Because it's my number. And if I didn't tell y'all, y'all wouldn't win. So go ahead and buy 860 every house. I don't know how many houses they got, but whatever house they got, just buy it. I don't care if you went to the houses in the new government subdivision. Just buy, 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 baby. So I thought I'd told you, I'd let you know what is taking place. Man, there's a lot of cocaine, eh? I thought they stopped making cocaine, but 860 kilos. I'm suspicious. Ah. Uh. We talk about it when we come back as we prepare to celebrate the Easter holidays, okay? Hold on, everybody. 860 kilos has been busted in Meguana. Two white men, one getaway in the bushes. They're searching for him every square inches. Catch him, Bala, catch him. Welcome back to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monka. Bradley Rule is my spiritual advisor. And I think when we took the adjournment, we were telling you how around 1 a.m. this morning, there was a major drug bust in the southern part of the Bahamas archipelago in which 860 kilos of cocaine have been seized upon a plane landing in Meguana. We are told that there were two white men who were flying the plane. One has been identified as a Brazilian national. It appears that he is the one who has been captured. The other white man, it is alleged, was successful in running away into the forest, into the bushes, and that notwithstanding, they had an elite dragnet waiting for them. Um, we are told that the United States Coast Guard was present, the United States Drug Enforcement Agency, and the Bahamas Drug Enforcement Agency. They were only able to capture one white man, and the other white man either was successful in evading them, or he was a part of the ruse, you know, because in this world, all kind of games are played. I just hope they would stop playing it here in the Bahamas and instead go play it elsewhere. So that is what we want to tell you. And it is reported that the cocaine is worth about seven and a half million dollars. Um, seven and a half million, that, that figure doesn't sound right. Pardon? How much keys did they find? I'm told 860 kilos. That's, that's, that's not, that's... 860 kilos. It don't weigh that much, eh? More than that, to me. I mean, I'm thinking, um, mind you, I'm no drug dealer. But okay, I'm, um, you're not a drug dealer. I'm not a drug boy, no. And you have but never I, but seen... But on the streets, I, I think... 860 kilos. Never, never before in my life. Okay. You know, but I mean, I, when I used to go to the Central Bank as a young boy, I, I saw a lot of drugs. They had drugs? At the yeah, central when, bank? When they, they when, were not smoking it there. No, no, no. Normally, what were they when doing? they seized... Who back was, in the day. This who was the, the governor the of the central bank then? I, I can't remember. My spiritual advisor, what year was it? 1983. He was governor of the central bank? Who? 1983. No, 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 no. You asked what year it was. Yes. When I was... I used to go to the central bank... Right. For, through the, through the bank's clearing house. Right, in 1983. Between 83 and 89. So 1983. Who was the governor general? He was the governor of the central who, bank. Who was? 1983. Anyhow. But yeah, I used to see when they would bring in these big bags. And, really? Yeah. Of cocaine? And, and yeah, and, and at, one, one t at one point when I was there, I was doing some clearing. I was clearing some checks for Chase Man Bank. Okay. When they would bring this through, one fell on the ground. Really? Like that's what, that's what, that was the first time I was able to see 
You Did know, the bag like, burst? Like. I don't know what happened, but the security guy was lifting because they came in this um, armored police vehicle. Okay. And um, um, one fell on the ground. That's a young boy then. It must have been like 18, 17, 18 at the time. Okay. But I'm saying, though, I'm thinking a kilo a Coke um, in the Bahamas, at least you're looking at maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Okay. So eight hundred yeah, so and sixty eight, 60 times. Times, let's just say 30000 It's how much? What? How much? About $26 million. $26 million. Mm -hmm. So you, you think that the authorities are undervaluing yeah, the cocaine. Yeah, I, I can't see how 860 kilos is only sound. Well, I'm going to warn you, eh? What's that? I'm going to warn you as one of the king's justices mm. of the peace. How, I, much is, how much is a kilo of coke value in the streets? Do you know? I really don't know, my spiritual advisor. Um, okay. I really don't know. You think anybody out there could call us and tell us? Of course. Um, <laughs> the, the, the Drug Enforcement Agency of the United States can tell us. The, the Bahamas Drug Enforcement Unit can tell us. Perhaps mm. the U.S. Coast Guard can tell us. And who knows? Um, I don't know if we have anybody selling it now because cocaine hardly makes any money here in the Bahamas. You don't think so? No. All coke is yeah. destined for the United yeah, States. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, yeah. We, we Americans love drugs, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's, it's the man of supply. That's what I'm saying. By the time it hit Florida, and I understand the more you push it upstate, the more value the, the cocaine has. Upstate? Yeah, upstate, no, like man. New York, New it, Jersey, it, No, the Boston. addiction is too great downstate. No, it used to be It used to be like that in the 80s, Miami, in that the, 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 the drug addiction was really kind of bad. They're not hooked but now? Cocaine is almost, it's, it's not the way... It's not being used the way people used it back in the day. They really? Got, they got some new drugs out, man. 860 okay. kilos destined the, for the United States of America. And you were telling that, that's, me? That's where it was destined for. Well, who, where the hell do you think it was going? Where they busted. Where, where, where they found this Make one up. Okay. If it's coming from Colombia, so, yeah, yeah, so certainly Colombia, you have to pass this way, eh? Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. passage you come through here. Then you go up the channel into Florida. Okay. okay. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Don't forget now, um, it's the U.S. officials who allow the second white man to get away. Our boys would have captured him. Mm. Yeah, but that's what's going on. So it's one big thing taking place mm -hmm. in May. Guana. I tell you, I tell you, people, I tell you, people would know what people are saying in the Bahamas. What are they the, saying? A kilo of coke is about fifteen thousand. And by the time it gets to the U.S., you're so, looking at 30,000. So, so, I will. so 50 <laughs> times 860 is how much? So, so um, I shouldn't be indulging How much in is this, 15 times 860? You, 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 you mean to tell me you don't know? No, I don't know. 860 times 15,000. Yeah. 12.9 million. Okay. Well, if they say 7.5 million, that isn't too bad. No, they, they're off. Of right? people, yeah, they're off. Yeah. They're off yeah. by five million. All I know, it's it's against and the law. And that's somewhere you on taking five million dollars away. Well, it's against the law, and it's again, it's it's a sin, isn't it? It's against the law. Yeah, of course. And when you break the sin. law, it's a sin. Yeah, when you break okay. the law, you you sin against the government. Okay. So it is what it is. This is powerful. It's dangerous drugs. Yeah. So if you're caught with that, um, you're caught with the possession. And then I think you're charged with possession and intent to supply. Eh? That's, 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 that's a big amount. Because you, yeah. you couldn't tell the judge that's for your personal use. Yeah, that's, that's too true. much drugs, man. Yeah. 860 kilos. Whew. That's plenty of cocaine. Yeah. Quite a bit. So what are we going to do with those scatter yeah, I bags? wonder what happens to that drugs. What do they do? Throw them in the sea? Well, um, don't forget now. Um, the first thing we have to determine is who is the real owner of the drugs? I suspect. You it, you got, so you're going to trace it back to, to its origin. I suspect that that coke belongs to the government of the United States of America. And when it comes to U.S. government coke, you may mess with anybody drugs, but there's one drugs you are never to mess with. So those drugs who use the bait who? Don't ever mess with the American government drugs. So, so, so it means then that that count better be right. 
because uh, they would know exactly how much drugs was supposed to be. It's their drugs. Yeah. And don't forget, um, I, I, when was it? What, what all happened with that law of Quinn situation? Well, don't forget. They uh, started out with 50 bags, and by the time they get the defense force, well, anyway, by the time you get the. <laughs> No. <laughs> Somebody keep pinching. No, I remember. <laughs> Something happened. See, eh? the first problem was that the Bahamas failed to recognize that it was a sting operation designed to capture certain senior defense force officers. Of course. So that was the first mistake. Okay. The second mistake is they failed to recognize that the cocaine itself belonged to the government of the United States of America. We did not assume what are you saying? You, that the you're Americans. Saying that the, the government, the United yeah, States government, sent the drug smuggling. Well, where were you when they were trading drugs for guns with you mean the Iran Contra affair? But yeah, where were you? With, with, you mean with uh, Reagan under under the Reagan administration? I, I'm not going to call his name because he's he's been a wonderful president. Okay. But when they were trading, don't forget now. Um, guns for drugs? Of course. You didn't know the Americans committed that stuff? I, I, yeah, I know about the Iran Contra affair. It's, it's, it's in yeah. history. Yeah, it's there. it's there. Right. So the U.S. government um, has the authority to smuggle drugs. If you are a superpower and you have mass weapons of destruction, mm -hmm. you have an armed force, you can smuggle drugs and you can smuggle it with impunity. So we fail to recognize that the United States government was smuggling drugs, they claim designed to entrap officers of the defense force. Okay? Yeah, because yeah, I think it started a certain number. Um, did they actually pull that boat into, into the defense force harbor? Or they left it out in the, in the, in the harbor? The down, defense down. force captured them. Right. Our and boys took them into the harbor. Arrested them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where did they carry them? Well, the defense was based. Once you arrest, you take them to a place. Yeah, so they took them to the base, to, and yeah. I think it was then they called the drug enforcement unit. Uh, so at the base there was fifty, but 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 by the time it got to to the drug enforcement unit, it was like what forty five. Well, 40? let's put it this way: um, there was a lot of miscounting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then <laughs> Christie came to power, and the Americans recognized <laughs> that prior to that, a lot of their cocaine, they couldn't believe that our boys or smart their boys. <laughs> <laughs> they told Mother Pratt they needed a commission of inquiry. inquiry. Yeah. So there was a commission of inquiry, now. and um, it was... An interesting one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we leave that alone for the time being. But hopefully in the future, if any citizen hear that there is another commission of inquiry being appointed, for heaven's sake, go to it because commissions have always been exciting. It's always been fun. All sorts of information coming out, but the drugs was the American government drug. Because the reality of the matter is, the U.S. government do smuggle drugs. That's a part of the history, but they can do it. See, if you're a superpower, if I'm a superpower, I could do it. Because all I need is to do it through legislation, and no one could do me nothing. No one could indict me, okay? Because I am the U.S. So... Perhaps one day I'll give you an accounting of how the Americans did some smuggling and our boys captured them, but we had to let them go because when the Americans stole Pinland them, that was their drugs. There was nothing Pinland them could do, but to let them go. Okay? I'll tell it, tell it to you all one of these days when I'm in a jovial mood. I'll tell you all uh, about it. How did it sound? Absolutely. So that is the latest on that. Now, there is something going on. Eyewitness News carry a very interesting story from the IDB. And the IDB has been commenting on the education of the Bahamas. Um, the IDB is like an international development bank. It's like a slush fund. 
on the history of the IDB in the Bahamas is if you come to power and you're a break, you can borrow money. When we won power, that's the FNM, and Jeff Lloyd was our Minister of Education, and one of his children was working at one of our universities. We borrowed millions of dollars. I can't bring that up because I, prom I had to apologize to Jeff Lloyd because he promised to sue me for $1 billion. And he also promised to sue Sabats. So I had to beg him for my job and tell him to forgive me. And Jeff Lloyd forgave me. As a result of that, Sabats didn't have to pay the billion dollars for me and I didn't get fired. So I better be careful how I talk about Jeff Lloyd because I suspect that summons, that suit is still there. All he gotta do is reactivate it. And then he also threatened to sue me when I told the world that he was not safe. So I had to apologize and take that back and say, I believe Jeff Lloyd is safe, even though I don't believe it, but I had to take it back. So, um, having said that to you, um, the IDB has said some damning things about the education of the Bahamas. Um, I think they have said how our children can't count good. Perhaps that's my definition of saying they don't know maths good, how their reading skills are terrible, and how most of us, the only qualification we have is D. Well, if 50 years after they threw me out of high school, because I got thrown out of high school in 1974, 50 years later, I don't feel too bad, because I had D in 74, and 50 years later, everybody else has D. So D seems to be the standard. But I think it's a game to lend money. And I'm so disappointed over what they are saying, and it calls for Bohemian everywhere to study the IDB. It's an interesting organization. And I really wanted to come here today to just talk about the IDB and what they had to say, because I've met some of them some years ago. Um, and they put up one fella to beat me up, you know. Most people ain't gonna believe that the IDB put up one guy to beat me up. That's true, on Carmichael Road. Most people ain't gonna believe that, but that's true. So, it's not a very safe organization. Um, but I'm very disturbed, and I have two wonderful articles that Eyewitness News publish about the IDB and what they say about our standard of education. And it's so complex. And what I find so emotionally traumatizing that me, an uneducated man, I'm called upon to explain to this nation this highly intellectual argument which the IDB has advanced to explain the illiteracy of my people. And then when I look at who's running education, I can't believe that IDB could be talking about them. Because I blame they, they can't blame me because everybody know I educated and everybody know I know teacher and everybody know I've never held state power. I've never been Minister of Education. Jeff has been Minister of Education, Jeff Lloyd. And we know that Glennis Hanna is the new Minister of Education. But the IDB has spoken badly about the standard of education. So they're getting ready to pump some more money, uh, maybe 500 million. I don't know, plenty, plenty money. So we need to have like a national debate on how are we going to improve 
the academic standing of our people or whether or not we should discontinue preparing them for colleges and universities when we know they can't make it there. Perhaps we need to ask the Jamaicans for assistance because the Jamaicans have come up with a wonderful idea where they have developed a lot of technical schools, a lot of schools where you train young people in developing good skills and their hands um, as opposed to what we are trying to do but the IDB needs to be watched. So I got some article here. I don't know if I'm ready to go into all what they're saying because this IDB revelation reminds me of when the FNM was in power and when Jeff Lloyd was the Minister of Education. That's what, when I read this, I said, Lord, I can't believe that I'm seeing the reincarnation of Jeff Lloyd and Dr. Minnis and the Free National Movement. So it's a very interesting article. And I would want citizens to go to Eyewitness News website to read it and to study it. Um, perhaps today I won't teach it. Uh, I don't feel like teaching it today. But tomorrow I might do it. I might, you know, lecture on it and see whether or not I can explain all this big money that IDB is getting ready to pump into the Ministry of Education. And they say, how Archer and them dumb. Can you imagine it? The German them dumb, but millions are being spent on them. And we seems, I won't use a big word. I'm sure that word is the word, but we seems to be oblivious to what they're saying. But it's very, very interesting. Have you had an opportunity, my spiritual advisor, to go to Eyewitness News to see what the IDB is saying no, about I, education? I, I, I don't know. Perhaps I should really allow you to go into it, and then tomorrow you and I can perhaps it, yeah. look at it and discuss it and see whether or not we can prepare um, Glennis Hannah Martin not to be like Jeff Lloyd. Um, hmm. Yeah. I don't want Glennis to be like Jeff Lloyd because Jeff Lloyd was a bad minister of education. Hundreds, perhaps thousands of young people slipped through the crack. Particularly in the midst of COVID, they slipped through the crack and they couldn't get online, they didn't get a good education, and as the IDB is pointing out, the children them can't read. They, they can't read, and they wouldn't be able to identify A, if it was big as Christ Church <laughs> Cathedral. So, I don't know. But COVID, COVID did present some, ex some extremely difficult challenges, Senator. Um, especially for the average, you know, young student who may not have had the necessary equipment to, to get online, to access whatever the teacher, um, you know, was, was, was teaching. And so it, it's, it was like kind of expected that that would happen. I mean, I'm not trying to make an excuse up, but um, it was extremely challenging. And a lot of our students did have challenges to the point where they were not effective as far as their grades is concerned in classes. And, you know, hopefully it, it could get corrected because that was like 2020, well, it's 2024, well, we hope it is corrected. And, and, and the grades, of course, can improve. All right, now it's it, Sandra. Just, just knock it away, just there, that's right. What's that? Okay, you, you, my spiritual advisor, I'm going to let you get away with it for the day. Yeah, I mean, that, that's real. That was real. I'll leave it that, but I'll look at it, though. I'll take a Tomorrow, look at it. we will raise it and see what we can make out of it. Right? Absolutely, yeah, man. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Now, 
the Anglican Church wanted me to give the people a quiz so that they can get one of these tickets. And then you wanted to give a quiz so that you could give away one of these Jamaican bun, right? Yeah, yeah I guess we could. What, you want to do that now um, while I look for something? Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Well, I wonder if we should, should we do it now or wait until I think after you five, should, right? I, no, I think, yeah, you should, should I think you should do that right now since you, you got how, five How much minutes. time do we have? Okay, so let's wait until you only get, 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 get 50 seconds. And then we, we got to go into the next segment. So when we go on the break, I'll, I'll I hope I'll when pull a we, I don't out. have time, you don't get upset, okay? Well, that's okay. Because my clock tells me we had five minutes. Oh. And you wouldn't listen. How long did it take you to give one question out, man? Just give me a second, Santa. I don't, I if you have sure. on the whole armor of the Lord, then ask the Lord's question. Let's see. Ah. Yeah, we, we, we do have about a minute or so to go, eh? So when I ask this question, Just Sandra, ask the question, my spiritual you, advisor. Remember now, we got to give the person an opportunity to call Yes. In. All right. I'd love to go to the Bible and find one. I, I just don't want to give a very easy question that you can easily, you know, win this. Thing. Oh, I think, that, I think the church give us the question. Good. So you do that one then. Yeah. Well, wait till this charge up some bit. We'll come back to it then. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we at. Where the IDB, I think they want to give us $500 million. And I think that's going to be powerful. Yeah, yeah. So that's so going to be very, me. very powerful indeed. Yeah. Oh, you see, check my phone. Yeah. Right, yeah, I see it. What you looking for? Okay. Anyway, folks. We'll be right back after the break. God saved the coming out of the Bahamas. God saved the king. This is powerful. We'll be right back after the break. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. Welcome back to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monker. Bradley Rule is my spiritual advisor, and it is birthday times. Bradley? Oh, yeah, we got a couple of birthdays. Um, is, that the, is that the latest one that you wanted to send to me? No? Oh, okay. So we got a couple of birthdays um, that we want to make mention of today. Um, are you ready, Ms. Medusa? Um, which one do you want to start with first? There are a few of them today. Let's see, today. All right, so we want to wish a very special 84th birthday to George Delancey of Seven Hills Estate. Uh, birthday greetings come from his son Dion, grandson Gabriel, George Delancey. Okay, so, so um, his son Dion and his grandson Gabriel. Sorry, I, Gabriel George Delancey. And let me forgive join. Me, forgive me. And let me join my spiritual advisor in wishing Mr. George Delancey of Seven Hills a happy, happy 84th birthday. And as the spiritual advisor has pointed out, birthday greetings come to him from his grandson, Gabriel George Delancey, his numerous children, including... Dion Delancey, and who else, my spiritual advisor? Any other name there? No, that's it. So happy birthday, George Delancey. I look forward to joining and coming to your house in Seven Hills. Happy birthday. It's powerful. All right. So and then we want to uh, wish a happy 44th birthday to um, Tamika Brown. It's coming from your sister, your parents, also your children, nieces, nephews, your family members. Um, especially the sisters, um, Delhi, Rika, and Shauna, um, they're wishing you a very special birthday. So happy birthday to Tamika Brown. Yes. Hope you enjoy your birthday, and we hope you live to enjoy many more. And of course, we want to wish happy birthday to Mitis Nixon. And Miss Nixon is celebrating her 80th birthday today. 
Happy birthday, Miss Nixon. And of course, birthday greetings come to you from your family, including your grandson, Leonardo Boros. It's powerful. All right, who do we have next? Uh, we want to wish this um, lady, this young lady, who was that? Uh, happy birthday to Deidre Hall. Uh, she is the sales agent here at Verizon Media Group. Okay, so happy birthday to you, Deidre Hall. Um, we hope you enjoy your special day. And then, of course, we hope you live to enjoy many, many more. So happy birthday to Deidre Hall. Uh, this is powerful. Happy birthday, Deidre. Yeah. All right, then we want to do a... Happy 42nd wedding anniversary shout out to Mr. David Glinton and Arlene Glinton coming from their three children, 301 Sergeant David Glinton Jr. and Nikki Andrea Glinton. May God continue to bless and keep you both. Happy 42nd wedding anniversary. Um, who else do we have there? We want to give a shout out to Chief Jasmine Jones down there at Cape Illusion Resort and Marina. So shout out to you, Jasmine Jones. Um, we hope you enjoy your day. All right, what, what, what am I missing? Let's see. Yeah. Is uh, anyone? Okay, that's it, eh? Is it, who's that person? Hmm? Who's the that's person? That's Jasmine Jones, right? Okay. Yeah, so we just, we just shout out. Okay. Go ahead. You want you to do this um, you want to now. Okay. Well, folks, um, I want to welcome Western Air let me come back to Western Air. I love Western Air so much. So I'll come back to Western Air so that everybody would know that Western Air has Jane Fosses and so forth. You want to do the... the yeah. The, you want to do the trivia for the tickets? Yes. So there right. are two tickets to attend the... Easter Monday Fet at St. James's Anglican Church, Adelaide mm -hmm. Road. Mm -hmm. So the spiritual advisor is going to give you the question. You call in, you get the answer, you win one of the two tickets. Let's go, my spiritual advisor. All right, advisor. so the first question is this. This is for the St. James Anglican Church. What are they having? A cookout? They're having a cookout this Easter Monday. Right, right. So this is for the uh, cookout, and they're located in Adelaide. Now, it's asking this question, when was St. James Church established? You can call in the number 323-775-6980775-6980776. Call if you have the answer to the question, when was the St. James Church established. Yeah. Welcome to Freedom March, Carlo. Good day, I want to answer the trivia question, Blake. Yeah. Could you turn that off, please? Yeah, Marshall. Yeah, go ahead. You, you can go ahead. Yeah, is it 1932? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Is it 1932, Blake? No, sir, I'm sorry. That, that, that is incorrect. I'm sorry. You can try again, I guess, if you think of the answer. Um, let's try somebody else. Three two three seven 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 five. The question is, when was St. James Anglican Church established? Um, what is the date and the year? All right, so you got to give us the complete date and the year. We got a caller? Okay, welcome to Freedom Marsh Caller. Do you have the answer? Yes. Um, can I try now? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Is it March the 20th, 1850? We can give it to her. Oh, that's close. Give it to her. Do you want to do that? Yeah, she's very e close. Even though it isn't correct? It's, she is very close, my spiritual. But she's not correct. Goodness of I see. Give it to her. Um, it's actually March the 22nd, 1850. Okay. But um, like he says, you, 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 he, he's going to give it to you. So you can come here at the studio and collect your ticket, okay? So you get it. Okay, what I can do, I can give that ticket on to someone else. Um, I'm an Anglican, and I have tickets already. Oh. I don't go to St. James, though. Oh. Okay, so we'll put it back in the pool. Thank you. Yeah, put it back in the pool. You're very kind. God bless you. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so the next person who calls in will automatically win it. Um, the no, you will come up with a substitute question, my spiritual advisor. Oh, so what do you do with the sticker here? Just give a substitute okay, the question. Next, okay, the next question they have is, mm, listen. Goodness of mercy. Which long-serving cabinet minister was also a long-serving catechist at uh, St. James Anakin Church? The second question is, which long-serving catechist Cabinet Minister was also a long serving catechist at St. James Anglican Church. Uh, welcome to Freedom Marsh Caller. Do you have the answer? Hello? Yes? Yes. Um, you have the answer yet? No. Tell us the answer. Oh, okay. It's March 9th, 1849. No, 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 no. We don't want you to answer that question. We want you to tell us who is, go ahead, my spiritual advisor. Yeah, which long-serving cabinet minister was also a long-serving... Hello? Yeah. Listen to the question. Go ahead. Something is wrong with the phone. Go ahead. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, this was the one for Anglican Church, you know. Yes, ma'am, but we would forget about the first question. We're asking the second one now. Okay. Now, here's, okay. The, here's the second question. Which long-serving cabinet minister was also a long-serving catechist at St. At St. James Church? No. Is it Moultrie? No. Is it who? Okay. She has Moultrie. No, it's no, not no. Moultrie. All right, let's take another call. Uh, welcome to Freedom March Call. Are you alive? The answer is Father James Moultrie. No. No. Sorry about that. Next caller, please. All uh, right, you have the answer? Which long-serving cabinet minister was also a long-serving catechist at St. James Anglican Church? Do you have the answer, caller? Three, yes, sir. Go ahead. No, sir. I'm sorry. That's not the answer. Um, the person must have been a cabinet minister. minister. Okay? Think about it. Hello? Can I uh, try to uh, answer the question? Yes. Go ahead. The answer is uh, Maynard, Timothy Maynard. All right, yeah, you're correct. All right, so Mr. Monkel, write your name down, and you can uh -huh. come and collect the ticket, okay? Okay, thank you. What, Great. you're going? No, I can stay here. Okay, um, what is your name, my dear? So this name can go on the air. Okay, tell okay. my producer quietly. Yeah. Mr. Producer, take the lady's name for me, please. Okay, now my spiritual advisor, come up with another Christian Okay, so question. we're going to give away this, um, this Bami. It's the four, Bami? Four, bread, four rolls of Bami. You have not given away the second ticket yet. Okay, now you see the thing, this is a confusion. No, there's no confusion. Okay. We're giving away two Anglican sure. tickets. We've okay. given away one. Right. Give another question, a Christian question, so that we can give away the second Anglican Okay, so let ticket. me ask a question. You want... The first question that we ask? You can give another Christian question. A question okay. that Anglicans okay. ought to know. Okay, um, give me the date the church was established, please. Uh, do you have the year that the church was established? If you can answer that question, then you can get that first ticket, right? Because we're going we're gonna to strike their question off, the first, this first question, right? Right, Sandra? Give them a question, my Yeah. Okay, ready, give it. 323-7775 uh, three, three, seven, 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 is the number to call. Um, yeah, go ahead. Hello, caller, are you there? Do you have the answer, caller? Okay. Okay, we lost that call. 323 is the number to call, 6980775. Welcome to Marsh caller. Hi. Yes, do you have the year that the church was established? I think it's 18, 1832. No, you are incorrect. You are incorrect. Okay, sorry. Welcome to Freedom March, caller. Yeah, the answer is the Honorable Clement T. Maynard. Well, that person already answered that question. We're sorry about that. We are, we're back to the first question now. Oh, okay, thank you. We're back to the first question. The question is this. Do you know which year the St. James Anglican Church was established? What is the year that St. James Anglican Church was established? Yes, what year it was established? 
All right, let's try the next caller. Uh, do you have the answer, caller? 1875. No. no, that's not it. I'm sorry for that. All right, let's try again another caller. What is the date in the year the Anglican Church was, well, the St. James Anglican Church was established? Give us the date in the year. Um, are you there, caller? Do you have the answer? Is it March 23rd, 1932? Wow. No. no. I'm sorry about that, sir. That's not the answer. Uh, next caller, please. Do you have the is, answer? Is it March 22nd, 1850? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Give the producer your, your name, name, please. All right, that is correct. Okay. Thank you. Now, before you give away these, tell the story where they can purchase them. All right, so um, Central Food Store, every year they, they do this advertisement with us, and they have these Jamaican products that you can purchase um, from their store during this time of the year. Uh, of course, they have the Jamaican Easter Bun, the HTP, sorry, the HTB. They have the HTB Easter Bun. Um, you have the water crackers, you got the Jamaican cheese, you got bami, of course, and then you got the um, bolo, you got the, you got the Easter spice bun, if I'm not mistaken, this is the spice bun, Zana, what is this? You got the Easter bun, um, what is this here? Anyhow, this is the JCS, there are two types of buns, this is the JCS bun, and then the other bun here is the HTP bun, along with the, um, what is this, Sandra? It's Jamaican bun. Bolo, you call it bolo. Then of course you got, um, you got the Jamaican, you got the Jamaican bami. And of course- What is the bami made from? This is like, like manioc. Yeah, but, I, I don't you're, know. You're, you're not talking to the this, Haitian this people. Is, this is cassava cake. Yes. Cassava. Uh, you could show up too, but manioc. Manioc, yeah. And upa rime haitien. Man, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is Jamaican cassava cakes. Okay, so it's tortillas de yuca. All right. Now, Sandra, I've never tasted this before. Okay. Never. It says soak in milk. Soak in milk. Coconut water, water for 30 minutes. Yeah. Overnight. If for best results. The Jamaican woman give that to you. Either you'll fry to never, never go home. At medium heat until golden brown. It's great. I've never tasted this. You must try it. Yeah. It's um, great. It's great. It's great? Yeah. So here's well, I have new breaking mm. news coming in. And I don't know what the PLP is trying to do to me. But it is with the greatest sorrow that I must report that the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas has captured more Haitian national. Which, which is good. They're, they're working. They are processing them to send them home. I had a wonderful day. Until you heard this news. Until I received this news. I yearn for a day when the government will not tell me when they're capturing my people. I know they're following the law. I know what the law is saying. But um, the government must take into consideration that these have been some times when I've not been feeling well medically. And they should do things to make me feel more comfortable in my society. But I must report that they have taken into lawful custody more of my people. So I call on the Commonwealth of the Bahamas to pray for the Haitian people in this time of revolution. I didn't tell you how on Saturday the former Prime Minister Perry Gladstone Christie and I attended a funeral for a citizen who hails from the Saxon will. It was perhaps one of the most emotional funeral that I have attended 
in years, Paul Christie and I were overcome with great emotion when we saw a, 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 a teenager who mourned the passing of his grandfather, Christy and I. We were moved with great compassion. Great compassion. Mr. Producer, I just sent you that video as quickly as you can put it in. Put it in the system. And Christy and I, um, you would recall that Saturday it rained. Ugh. It rained, it rained. And perhaps there were some funeral services that were canceled. But the people of Mason Edition decided that they were going forth with the burial of Edward Charles Oaten, a wonderful cultural man from Mason Edition who had died around the 20th of February of this year, but buried on Saturday. And uh, there was a point when Christy and I had an opportunity to discuss international affairs and a secret and quiet mission that he has been participating in with a view to resolving the conflict in Haiti. I was so moved by the revelation of Mr. Christie and the wonderful job that he was doing to assist in bringing stability to Haiti. Oh, I was so excited over it and the many international contacts which he has quietly been making on behalf of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas to resolve the conflict. I was even particularly excited when Mr. Christie revealed to me that the overall strategy is to permit the Haitian people through free and fair elections to elect the government of their choice without anyone interfering with the process. It was great. I wish that I could see Christie again because his revelation lifted my spirit, freed my soul, give me the kind of hope and inspiration for the people of Haiti. Oh boy. Is that video ready? I mean, what's that I've for got a short time to live. He is full of misery. He coming up and is cut down like a flower. I mean, oh. He flees as it were a shadow. Video. Grandson. In the midst of that, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor? But of thee, O Lord. I have not heard a young man mourn the passing of his maternal grandfather the way this youth mourn the passing of his. Maternal grandfather literally begging to be taken to the grave with his grandfather. It was overwhelming. Yeah, it was something to behold. It was full of emotion. Yeah. So, um, the relatives and family and friends from Mason Edition buried that great citizen on, on Saturday. That's the funeral service that Mr. Christie, both Mr. Christie and I attended, both Mr. Christie and I spoke at. I don't know, maybe tomorrow I'll show you Mr. Christie and 
some of the things that he had to say about this wonderful citizen, Charles, Edward Charles Houghton. But Christie provided me with great hope for the Haitian people. I think Mr. Christie should speak publicly to the nation and tell them what he has been doing and his hope and aspiration for the people of Haiti, particularly at a time like this when the government is quietly wronging up Haitian nationals and repatriating them to Haiti in accordance with the law. So that is what has been going on in Nassau, um, where immigration here seems to be more successful than immigration in Grand Bahama. So I thought I'll tell that to you that more Haitians are being round up. So we have seen where the PLP has intensified its policy of breaking down shanty homes, breaking down shacks, and identifying and repatriating Haitian nationals. So it's the rule of law. Oh, oh but it's so devastating for me. I yearn for a day when Haiti will be free and we will be able to build a just Haitian land on the island of Hispaniola. This is powerful. God saved the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. God saved the king. It's powerful today. I'll be right back after the break. Hold on, everybody. Welcome back to Freedom Match. My name is Rodney Monker. Bradley Rule is my spiritual advisor, and we are at that point where we invite members of the public to call in and express themselves or ask questions. Bradley? Yeah, sorry, we had to call in a segment. I'm going to ask a couple of questions just to give out three of these items today. All right. What's that going on? Just focus. Oh. <laughs> All right, yeah. So I'm on 323-7775. It's the number to call 69807-75 and 69807-76. All right, so the first question you can call in uh, is this. On which day? Right, listen very carefully now. On which day? Of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was the Passover lamb sacrificed. Which day was it that the, the, the Passover lamb sacrificed? 323 7775 is the number to call. 698 The second question is where did Jesus and his disciples eat the Passover? Where exactly did they eat the Passover? And of course, the third question is this who betrayed Jesus and what did he use to betray him with? The first question is, on which day was of the Feast of the Eleven Bread was the Passover lamb sacrifice? That's the first question. The second question is, where did Jesus and his disciples eat the Passover? And the third question is, who betrayed Jesus and with what did he betray Jesus with? 323-7775 is the number to call, 698-0775, 698-0776. Welcome to Freedom March, caller. You're live. All right. You either can, you can engage us or you can answer any one of those questions. Welcome to Freedom March. Hello. Yes, ma'am. You're live. Answering the third. What's the third question? Who betrayed Jesus? And what did he use to betray Jesus? Who was it? He got the Yes. Okay, and who betrayed Jesus? Peter. Who? Who? Peter. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You got to you got to call back. Um, okay. Okay, I give that to you. No, it was not. It was him. not Peter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, caller. Okay. Welcome to Freedom. <laughs> Welcome to Freedom Marsh. Call you live. 
Yes, it was. Absolutely, you, you're reading. It was the first day of the week that the Passover lamb was sacrificed. And that's very important to remember. The first day of the week was when the Passover lamb was sacrificed. All right? All right, so um, do you know where to find the studio? All right, get her name for first place, and she can come to the studio and collect a gift from the table here. All right? 323-7775 is the number to call. We already have one question already answered. The, the, other two, the, other, the second question is, where did Jesus Christ and his disciples eat the Passover? Where exactly did they eat it? We have a caller. Go ahead, caller. Hi, Wendy. You want to answer that question? No, the question that who betrayed Jesus? Jesus. Yes, who betrayed uh, he, Jesus? Judas with a kiss. All right. Uh, okay. So, so you take his name. Then you answer the phone. Um, take his name. He, is he, I, I'll be giving him a prize? Yes, he's going to get one of these gifts. Here. Okay. Um, do I know your name? Paul Willie. Paul oh, Willie. Paul. Okay, Paul. Uh, <laughs> all right, Paul Willie. All right, Paul. We'll you, put you your name down so you can get one. You can send somebody. You can come to get um, one of these gifts here from Central Food Store, okay? All right, sir. So, Paul, you still know your Bible? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is powerful. All right, Paul, really. Okay, thank you, eh? Hey, you know people said doing that today. Uh, doing what? Giving you a kiss. Well, just, you. Yeah. well just don't let no man kiss you. You, you might you don't have to worry about no betrayal. Hey, okay. Paul. <laughs> Paul, you, you may be speaking to Judas. Um, he, he hanged up on you. He know you're talking for <laughs> So, Paul, Billy, he has one. One. Next. Wow. 323 is the number to call, 698 All right, so the second question is, where did Jesus Christ and his disciples eat the Passover? Welcome to Freedom March, Carla, you live. Yes, I would like to answer the third question. Somebody already answered the third question. You got the, the third second one? one. Yeah. With, with, um yeah, Judas and uh, the kiss. Judas and the kiss was Judas the third. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's the third one. What about the second one? You want to make an attempt at that? Repeat. Oh, uh, let me try it. Yeah. Um, was it the upper room? There you go. There you go. It was in an upper room. Nice okay. new furnish. All right, so let the producer, Mr. Producer, take her name. Thank you. J just hang on. You lost her? Okay. I'm sorry? Okay. Oh, so the first person who won... The producer is saying that he lost you and he didn't get your information. So you have to call back and get the producer information. All right? All right. So that's the, we give us three today, three tomorrow, and three on Thursday. All right? Because okay. there's nine items here. Well, my spiritual right. advisor, you're not giving away this. Okay. All right. So you're not giving away the cheese that go with it. This is Jamaican cheese. Jamaican cheese is okay, so very, very good. And that's right? second three. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. And this is what? Jamaican bun? Yeah, that's a spice bun, yeah. Okay. You get rid of everything else, okay? Right. This is powerful. Yeah. yeah. But Sandra, you can always... My spiritual advisor, anyhow. we're not going to argue three on two, national three. television over Centerville food. Yeah. You stop it, okay? Amazing. All right. Amazing. Go oh, ahead. Boy, I tell you. Um, you took half of the gifts. My spiritual advisor, would you please keep up to this? Okay? 323-7775 is the number to call. 698-0775. You can engage us now. We, we, the lines are open. Uh, whatever it is you, need, you want to discuss with us, you can do it. Welcome to Freedom March Call. You're live. Good day, sir. Yes, sir. How are you? Keep going uh, My formal work, please. Uh, we don't know what on the website. Uh, there's no and water? Maybe being paid. Um, and playing in the other foreigners, the Frenchmen, when they get fired, then they don't get termination pay. Really? Yes, sir. Where, um, where do you work? Uh, this is the big building right across from uh, Island Lux. If you remember, it was a time when you came there, the guy who was holding the camera for you by the gate, that's me. That was me. By Island Lock? Yes, sir. The big CSB size bill, bill, building which belongs to the doctor. Goodness me. Um, repeat that one more time. Do it slowly. Where, 
Where was There's this? There's no NIB being paid. Uh, it's the building, the CSB5 building. Dr. Brown? Dr. Grant. Dr. Brown. Dr. By Grant. By the way, came the other day, by the RBC building. Okay. They've been building from... All right, yeah. The, okay, so that's that two-story building on the corner of Collins Avenue. Four stories. Uh, okay, so... The, oh, uh, you know... Royal that, Bank's at the bottom? You, is that... You're talking about Dr. Brown, eh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Brown? You don't get NIB paid. Really? And you're terminated. You don't get paid. I want to fight now for NIB. Listen, and I uh, Dr. Brown is a wonderful citizen. Have you attempted to sit down and talk with him? Sir, it isn't like that. Sir. I, I know why. It have to be like this. But Do me a favor. I want you to go and speak to him. If he does not speak to you, then you let me know. And I shall go and talk with him because he likes me. I have him in the labor board right now for a trade dispute. Really? Yes, sir. So, I mean, if you invite me to your show sometime, I can come and show you my paperwork and everything. Uh huh. Our personal talk, talk, talk peace to him first. And then he he, li he listen to me. All right. The L labor board already tried to check him out. Will you listen to me, please? Yes, sir. Um, he's my friend. I know that. I know that this is the same guy who held the camera for you that time and you came there. Yes, but I'm trying to photo. help you. So listen to me, please. Ready? Yes, sir. I want you to go and talk peace. Then, if that doesn't work, you locate me and I shall go and see Dr. Brown. He's my very good friend. And he and I know how to talk peace. So you speak to him first. Tell him peace, and if that don't work, Mr. Munger, Mr. Munger, yeah. it was on because they asked for my overtime. Oh, they were yes, I, I, I understand. I, I understand. Just talk to him first. I went to NID to collect, yeah. and then I had, they sent me to the labor board. Then when I went there, the guy on the labor board say, "If you have us call them, they're going to terminate you." And that's exactly what happened. And they terminate me because I went to the labor board. Okay. Because I needed my fund. He was getting the off, and he is appeared to be an honest fellow. So I agreed to 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 ask him about it, and then they said they don't know what to do. So when I told them that the labor board would know what to do, they got frustrated and suspended me. Then when my suspension was over, they had a, a termination letter prepared for me. They owe me vacation pay. I didn't get termination. So since. I, I, you, I refuse to believe that Dr. Brown would commit that sin. You go. I, and, I want you to listen to me, I comrade. Mean, Jesus, you you're you not listening. Tell people you adopted son. Okay. Tell people you adopt me, and that's how you treat me. Well, well, if he's your adopted father, no, he then I'm adopted your adopted father. uncle. So listen to me. Yes, sir. You talk to him, then come back to me, and then me and you will go and see him. He's my friend. He's my friend too. But if he's your friend, certainly you should be able to sit down with your friend and resolve the matter. No, my ain't on the I tell him you know, okay. he, he, he terminate me making up for okay. Do you have a lawyer? That does what make me come to Okay, do you have a lawyer? Not yet. You have to get an attorney. Yes, sir. All right. All these matters, you can take them to the court and let the court decide them. Yeah, but we're dealing up with the labor board right now. Right. Okay. So, you know, you need to get yourself a lawyer to deal with the matter if you want to, if you want satisfaction. All right? Okay, caller. Thank you. Uh, 323-7775 is the number to call. 698-0775. 698-0776. Uh, welcome to Freedom March Call. You're live. The caller, are you there? Right. Go ahead, Good afternoon. Yes, good Mr. afternoon. Mr. Monker, good afternoon, Good afternoon, my dear. Mr. Monker, yes. I had a shock of my life today. I went to send my daughter some money. Um, she's in Canada. Yes. And Western Union told me I couldn't do it due to the new policy change of Central Bank. What is that policy? They say if my daughter is in school, she needs all kind of documentation. Okay. If she give up her citizenship, she needs to prove that she's not a Bahamian no more. So it's she, like Bah Bahamians can't spread money to Canada no more. But let me ask you a question. Is your daughter still a Bahamian? Yes, she is. Okay. And they need proof that she's a citizen? They, they tell her if she is not a citizen of 
Canada. I okay. can produce a valid, um, oh Lord, uh, what, what is it? But it's, it's, something. That's a bunch of full of so well, no, 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 no. Let's work with them. Let's work with them. I think it is easy for you to prove that she's a citizen. Do you have a birth certificate and her passport? Um, I come to Katie. Yeah. Huh? Chantel. Are you yes, talking? no, yes, yes, I have it, I have it. Okay, yes. so you can produce a birth certificate, copy of a passport, and you can do an affidavit that you are the mother, that she's a citizen of the Bahamas, having never renounced citizenship. You then take it to John Rule. You know who's John Rule? No, sir. John Rule is the governor of the Central Bank of the Bahamas. Then, okay. if that doesn't work, you come back to me, and we shall see where we go from there. How does it sound? Okay, so where can I locate Mr. John Rose? At the Central Bank. He's a very okay. tall, distinguished-looking Negro gentleman. Okay. So okay. you, you go right. there and you ask to see John Rule. Yes. And you tell him what the case is. But make sure you carry documentary evidence and an affidavit that you will swear that your daughter is still a citizen of the Bahamas. Okay, sir. And if that okay. doesn't work, you come look for me and I will help okay. you to case them out, okay? Okay, sir. Okay, Th thank this, you very much. This is powerful. 323 We still got 10 more minutes. We can we do? entertain some calls, yeah? Okay. Ten, Ten more minutes, minutes folks. Call us. Call us three two three seven 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 five six nine eight zero seven seven five six nine eight zero seven seven six. Welcome to Freedom Marsh caller. Same call again, so a feedback. Uh, you're live, caller. Turn your radio down, please. Hello. Yes, turn your radio down, please, caller. Yeah, done. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, done. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah. Uh, 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 Mount Sinai and Jerusalem. We, we, we're done with those questions. Stay tuned tomorrow for some more questions to win um, these items from Simon Fusto, okay? Oh, that one to finish. All three of the questions yet have been answered. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, that's it. That's it. Great show, great show. Thank you so much, Carla. Welcome Hello. to Freedom. Yes, go ahead, Carla. You're live. Uh, Mr. Rowe. Yes, sir. How are you today? I'm doing well. Okay. The lady who called about Canada, it, uh, the Canadian dignitaries say that too many people enter in Canada. Because I listen to the Canadian news every evening. Now, for that young lady, who got a daughter in school, let's say if I want to send one of my sons over there, I got to pay up for a year and I have to make sure they have a living accommodation possible because on the news, if so many expatriates in Canada, they're running out of Housing. Okay. Okay. And, well, that's the rule. And tell your co-host or your boss, he shouldn't make statements like that, but he'll help case them out. Because that's the Canadian rule. And either you, buy, you, you, you buy, go buy it, buy it mm. or you don't. All right, sir? Thank you so much. And thank you for thanking me. Yes. Thank you so much, Carla. Welcome to Freedom March, Carla. We don't more calls. Okay, 323-7775. It's the number called 6980775. So the crisis in Haiti, it's worsening. Is it? Uh, yeah, man. What's going yeah. on now in Haiti? I was think. well, I kind of saw the hand right on the wall. What did you see? After they had called that meeting in Jamaica with CARICOM, and then, of course, spearheading the meeting was the United States, Canada, and France. 
and also um, I think um, Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. But here's what's happening: um, the the situation in Haiti has worsened, um, especially relates to the gangs and their territorial um, power over certain regions, especially in the port of Prince area. And so, as a result of that, more Haitians are fleeing. Really? Yeah. Where they going? Well, you you wonder what's going on. Are they they trying to get to the U.S. or are they coming to the Bahamas? Because it's it's a no-no to get to the U.S. Because what's been happening with the United States now, they've really beefed up their their security as far as homeland security is concerned, especially in the Florida Straits and 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 the East Coast there. So, I mean, we can't house them. We can't we, we can't afford to where to have them uh, here. You the know? Haitians going. You're saying I they're wish, leaving? I wish I know they... All I know is they're they going west. They're going west. They're leaving? They, they, they're coming to the west. They're yeah. leaving? Yeah. yeah. And this is as a result so of the, what? The crisis in Haiti. Welcome to Freedom March Call. You're live. Yes. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. How are you? I'm well. I'm wonderful. We delay you at the, the comment, but why is the Western Union... Western Union is not accepting... Money transports to go to Canada. That is unseen because everybody send money to Haiti, Jamaica, with no problem. Now, with the gentleman who say he listening to the Canadian news every day, then he need to see on YouTube where the Canadian government is asking for people to come to Canada to be employed. So let him know, please do his research. Ain't no women migrate to Canada unless they go for knowledge and education. They're migrating there just to go there and sit down and hope something could happen. They're going to get educated. Every women that I know in Canada, they're not wanted. They're not on America most wanted, and they went on a plane. And they went with a round trip ticket. They did not go there looking for a shelter. Okay, so please, if we have a Canadian embassy here in the Bahamas, they need to address that because money is supposed to go for assistance to anybody from our country to sit down in Canada. They're not begging. So tell Western Union who's born basically by Jamaican and Haitian. All the Western Unionists I know in the Bahamas are all operated and run by the Haitian community and the Jamaican. So why is it so difficult for her to send funds from the Bahamas to Canada? Thank you. I finished with that. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, Carla. Welcome to Freedom March, Carla. You're live. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Um, I'm a concerned citizen. Okay. Uh, a couple of days ago, I listening to your show, and a lady reported a store owner who did not give you receipts for you saying when you purchase it. Yes, the Chinese. Okay. So I, I have discovered another store that is doing the same thing. Maybe you all can uh, direct the uh, rightful authority to them as well. Which store is that? Okay, this store is located on Calvin Road, just east of Golden Isles Road, near the 6th Lamp Pole. And Calvin they are Road. not giving out receipt? No, they, well, they never give me any. Are they my people or are they your people? I think they're your people, Mr. Mr. Monkey. Well, don't worry about that. That rule will be changed now. Tout mon ancien qui gagne go go magasin na Calpen Road. Les monio achetez bagay, s'il vous plaît, ba receipt la, and it's solved. Okay, so starting tomorrow, we will give receipt to everybody. Okay. Thank you, sir. This is powerful. And any Haitian you find who don't give any receipt, you call me. Don't call the government. Call me and I'll go and see them, okay? Right away, sir. This is powerful. La Force. Welcome to Freedom March, caller. 323-775-698-0775. We can take another call in 698-0776. Yeah, so 
I, you know, you got to follow this Haitian crisis. You have to. You're going to have to tune into this. Um, the question is now, where, how far is this international force that's supposed to go in there to they try... They reach yet? No, I think they're still trying to work out some things. Goodness me. What, what is the Kenyans but, but doing? They're going to go. The Kenyans are going? Once this thing is worked out, they're going to go. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Freedom. Hey, Mr. Rose. Yes, sir. How you guys doing? Doing well. All right, then. Yes, I'm out on this one. Right? I yes, saying, right? Listen, um, you know, the Asians get and get every other day. So, we document in this. Man, I like to say, the same Asians coming back. Well, and the boat cheap. But they, they're fingerprinting us. That's we, an excellent question. We're being fingerprinted. They're taking okay. our Wait photographs. They're not also breaking some of the laws. Um, some of us are being sent back minus our passports, uh -huh. which would make it even more difficult for us to return. I think it is wicked. We should be given our passport. Don't mind, we're black and we're Haitians. We're people, okay? But they running from something? Yeah, we're running from the Tonton Makuts. No, okay. there's, there, there's no Tonton Makuts. That, okay? that died with Papa and Baby uh, Dog. The Tonton right, Makuts will always live. Yeah. <laughs> Bless up. Do well, my brother. Yeah. This is powerful. All right, the Haitian that's it. battle continues. And we may have to go to Haiti to defend the sovereignty. I'm ready to go. Okay? Yes, I, think. I am more than willing to send you. When I, you go? I think I'm going to go When you see. go? Cunha. You going to go now? We. Oui. Okay, yeah, we need to I send I think you. I'm going to All right, see listen, let's Monroe. pack him up and send him to Haiti on a peace making mission. What peace? If I go to Haiti, I go for La Guerre. We're going to send you straight to barbecue. La Guerre. We're going to send you straight to barbecue. All right. All right. Listen, um, I'm ready to return to Haiti so that I may stand up for my people. Okay? If I have to go, I just have to go. I think it would be powerful. Yes, let's ask the government to work that when out. Oh, you made some national security to arrange that. Oh, oh that's very right. easy. Yeah, I just said yeah, I'll have to let my right yeah. know that I'm going, and I'm going without any ammunition. I'm going on a mission of peace. That, that wouldn't be wise. What do you mean, wise? They don't understand peace, down. Oh, you stop that. Stop your racism. They don't understand Being peace. The most they, peaceful. Only, they only understand machetla and zam. Don't say that. That isn't true. Um, we are very peaceful. We were peaceful from the days that we were captured by the Africans and brought here. Who knows? Tout le monde ici! Bon dieu! This is powerful. God save the king. God save the people of Haiti. God save the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. God save King Charles III and the entire royal family. Do well tomorrow.